Welcome to Who Died Today America, your trusted source for honoring those who have bid us farewell. On this 20th of July, we're not just delivering news, but saluting extraordinary lives that have touched ours. Today, we acknowledge recent passings while paying special tribute to notable figures we've lost. Each left an indelible mark on our society and inspired countless others. Join us as we remember their remarkable contributions, reflect on their impact, and celebrate the legacies they've woven into the fabric of our nation. In Who Died Today America, their stories live on. Stay with us as we pay homage to these remarkable lives and their enduring influences. Number 12. Nick Benedict, the realm of daytime television, suffered a major loss on July 14, 2023, as soap opera veteran passed away at the age of 77 due to complications from emergency spinal surgery. Benedict was celebrated for his compelling performances on numerous iconic soap operas, including All My Children, The Young and the Restless, and Days of Our Lives. Benedict will be remembered fondly for his portrayal of Phil Brent on All My Children, the husband to Susan Lucci's Erica Kane. Taking over the role from Richard Hatch in 1973, Benedict became a central figure on the series until his departure in 1978. His performance during his final season earned him a Daytime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Actor in a Daytime Drama Series in 1979. His career in soap operas continued as he brought Michael Scott to life in The Young and the Restless in 1981. Later, he played Curtis Reed on Days of Our Lives, appearing in 93 episodes between 1993 and 2001. Benedict's talent extended beyond daytime dramas, appearing on classic series like Mission Impossible, Hawaii Five-O, Knott's Landing, Medical Center, The Dukes of Hazard, and Tales from the Dark Side. He also had significant roles on Tribes and Santa Barbara. He is survived by his wife, Ginger, to whom he was married for 22 years. As of now, there have been no announced plans for a memorial service. Benedict's career was filled with unforgettable performances that deeply touched audiences and shaped soap opera history. His legacy in daytime television will be remembered for decades to come. Number 11, Mike Hammond, a prominent Great Britain ice hockey player, tragically lost his life in a car accident in Canada at the young age of 33 on July 19. Hammond first appeared on the international stage in 2018, playing a key role in helping his team secure the gold medal at the World Championship Division 1 Group A in Hungary. Throughout his illustrious career, Hammond also made significant contributions to the Coventry Blaze, Manchester Storm, Brayhead Clan and Nottingham Panthers in the Elite League, earning him a solid reputation among ice hockey enthusiasts. His stints in Germany, Denmark and Canada further cemented his legacy in the sport. Known for his tenacity on the ice, Hammond showcased his abilities earlier this year at the World Championship Division 1 Group in Nottingham. His efforts helped Britain secure a much-coveted promotion back to the top level of competition. The sudden and tragic news of his passing was announced by Ice Hockey UK, expressing profound grief and extending condolences to Hammond's family, friends and teammates. Hammond's untimely demise is a significant loss to the sport, leaving behind a legacy of athletic excellence and passion for the game of ice hockey. Number 10. Kevin Mitnick, a renowned American computer security consultant, author, and once a convicted hacker, tragically succumbed to pancreatic cancer on July 16th at the age of 59. Born on August 6, 1963, in Van Nuys, California, Mitnick is best remembered for his high-profile arrest in 1995 and subsequent five-year prison sentence for numerous computer and communications-related crimes. His curious and adventurous journey into the digital world started at the age of 12 when he conned a bus driver to tell him where he could buy his own ticket punch. Mitnick first gained unauthorized access to a computer network in 1979 marking the beginning of a lifelong fascination and career in information technology. After serving his sentence, 
Mitnick embarked on a successful career as a security consultant. He founded Mitnick Security Consulting, LLC, and held executive positions at No B4 and Zimperium. His life story, filled with controversy and intrigue, has been the subject of books and films, including the 2000 movie Trackdown, where he was portrayed by Skeet Ulrich. Mitnick's life and exploits brought to the public eye the vulnerabilities of computer networks, while his later endeavors showed his commitment to rectifying those same issues. He leaves behind a legacy as a fascinating, if controversial, figure in the world of cybersecurity. Number 9. James Reston Jr., a trailblazing American journalist and author, passed away at 82 from pancreatic cancer on July 19th at his home in Chevy Chase, Maryland. Reston carried forward the legacy of his parents, prominent New York Times editor James Scotty Reston and journalist Sally Fulton, making a name for himself in the spheres of political and historical journalism. Reston Jr. wrote many influential articles covering various topics including the Vietnam War, the Jonestown Massacre, civil rights, the impeachment of Richard Nixon, and the tragic events of September 11th. He played a crucial role as David Frost's advisor during the Watergate interviews, which ultimately led to the publication of his book, The Conviction of Richard Nixon. This insightful book served as inspiration for Peter Morgan's play Frost Nixon in 2006 and the subsequent film in 2008, where Reston Jr.'s character acted as the narrator. His career, decorated with the Pre Italia and DuPont Columbia Award for his radio documentary, Father Cares, The Last of Jonestown, showcased his dedication to shedding light on underreported topics. He was a guest scholar at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars and a Global Fellow until December 2022. His affiliations included the Authors Guild, the Authors League of America, the Dramatists Guild of America, and Penn. Reston Jr.'s personal life was deeply interwoven with his work. His memoir, Fragile Innocence, narrated his daughter Hillary's experience with a debilitating viral brain infection. He is survived by his wife, Denise Brender Leary, and their three children, Maeve, Hilary Reston, and Devon. James Reston Jr.'s body of work and his enduring dedication to journalism will be profoundly missed. Number 8. Lou Perkins, a prolific figure in American collegiate athletics, passed away at the age of 78 on July 18 in Lawrence, Kansas. Over his four-decade career, Perkins served as athletic director at several prestigious institutions, including the University of Kansas, the University of Connecticut, and the University of Maryland. His leadership often found him in the eye of the storm, confronting NCAA violations and scandals. Perkins embarked on his career at the University of South Carolina Aiken. As a diligent administrator and coach, he steered the athletic department through the university's transition from a junior college to a four-year institution. He later held key positions at the University of Pennsylvania and Wichita State University, leading the latter to an exemplary program status after overcoming NCAA probation. Perkins' tenure at the University of Kansas saw historic victories, including the 2008 Orange Bowl and the 2008 Men's Basketball Championship. Perkins also led impressive facilities upgrades, transforming the campus and bolstering the athletic budget from $27 million to over $55 million. However, his time at KU ended in scandal, resulting in an early retirement in 2010. Despite the controversy, Perkins's commitment to collegiate athletics is undeniable. His influence and work had a significant impact on the institutions he served and on American collegiate athletics as a whole. Perkins's passing marks the end of an era, but his legacy in the sports world remains. Number 7. Bruno Fleerl, prominent German architect, architecture critic, and writer, passed away at the age of 96 on July 17. Celebrated as one of the most influential figures in the architecture and city planning of East Germany, Fleerl left an indelible imprint on the landscape of his country. 
Following his release from French war captivity in 1947, Fleurel began studying architecture at the Berlin University of the Arts. A dedicated communist, he relocated to East Germany in 1952 and embarked on a successful career, assisting in the design of the Paris era Platz and becoming a leading advocate for the preservation of the Palace of the Republic during the debate over the restoration of the Berlin Palace. His tenure as a research fellow at the Deutsche Bauakademie, his role as editor-in-chief of the magazine Architektur der DDR, and his later teaching position at Humboldt Universität zu Berlin speak to his commitment to architectural discourse and education. Despite facing conflicts with the Socialist Unity Party of Germany, which resulted in his departure from the magazine, Flierl continued to be a leading voice in the field. Flierl's influential work, combined with his commitment to his beliefs and his contributions to architectural education, solidify his legacy as a cornerstone of East German architecture. His passing marks the end of an era in the architectural history of Germany. Number 6. Mirko Novosel, a celebrated figure in the world of professional basketball, passed away at the age of 85 on July 20th. Novosel, both a player and a coach, had an illustrious career that left an indelible mark on Croatian and Yugoslav basketball. Novoso began his playing career in 1952 with Lokomotiva Zagreb, a relationship that lasted until 1966. However, it was as a coach that he truly shone, sculpting the careers of many exceptional players, including Croatian Hall of Famers Kresimir Kosic and Drazen Petrovic. Over the course of his coaching career, Novosel led Kibona to two Yugoslav League titles, seven Yugoslav Cups, and two European Champions Cup titles in 1985 and 1986, when he was named European Coach of the Year. His skills also extended to the international stage. He headed the senior men's Yugoslav national team to silver at the 1974 FIBA World Championship and the 1976 Montreal Summer Olympics, and to bronze at the 1984 Los Angeles Summer Olympics. Novo Sel later led the senior men's Croatia national team to a bronze medal at the 1993 European Championship. His outstanding contributions to the game earned him spots in both the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and the FIBA Hall of Fame. The loss of Mirko Novo Sel marks the end of a significant chapter in basketball history. His accomplishments and influence, however, continue to resonate throughout the sport Number 5. Christian Urs Quadflieg, renowned German television actor and director, passed away at the age of 78 in Hamburg on July 16. The son of the celebrated German actor Will Quadflieg, he left his own mark on German television and theatre. Quadflieg's education from the Westfalische Schauspielschule Bochum led to a successful acting career spanning several decades. His repertoire included work in Oberhausen, Wuppertal, Basel, Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, Vienna, and Zurich, in addition to a notable engagement at the Salzburg Festival. On screen, Quadflieg became a household name with roles in Der Alte, Derek, Das Traumschiff, among others. His performance as Dr. Karsten Mathiesen in Der Landarzt and his directorial skills demonstrated in 16 of the 40 episodes were particularly recognized. Off-screen, Quadflieg was known for his love for poetry, often touring Germany with reading programs. He also made significant contributions to German voiceover work, notably for Dean Stockwell in Paris, Texas, and Robert Taylor in Broadway Melody of 1,936 Inches and The Crowd Roars. Despite his father's fame, Quadflieg carved out his own niche in the industry, often going by Christian Urs, early in his career. His pursuit of quality roles over quantity underscored his commitment to the craft. The entertainment industry mourns the loss of this versatile talent. Number 4. Marie-Laure de Decker, acclaimed French photographer, passed away at age 75 on July 15. Renowned for her evocative war photography, including her coverage of the Vietnam War, 
She bore witness to conflicts in countries like Yemen, Chad, and South Africa. Besides her wartime chronicles, De Decker was a celebrated portrait photographer, capturing renowned French personalities in her lens. French Algeria, De Decker transitioned from modeling to photography, inspired by the works of photographer Dominique Merlin. She got her start in the industry by approaching and photographing admired artists like Man Ray and Marcel Duchamp. De Decker's career took a decisive turn when she joined Newsweek's team in Saigon, capturing the grim realities of the Vietnam War. Her travels also led her to South Africa's racial conflict, where she met with Nelson Mandela. In Chad, she focused on the Wadabi people, striving to preserve their culture through photography. Later in life, she resided near Rabastans, where she spent her childhood visits. She was married to lawyer Thierry Levy and had two sons. In 2013, she received the Albert Kahn International Planet Prize for her poignant war photography. Her passing marks the end of a compelling career that captured historical moments and cultural icons with unrivaled sensitivity. Number 3. William Stuart McMillan, Canadian hockey legend known as Billy McMillan, passed away at the age of 80 on July 15 in his hometown of Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. McMillan had a rich career in ice hockey, both as a player and coach. An outstanding player, McMillan had represented Canada in two World Championships and the 1968 Winter Olympics, bringing home bronze medals. Making his National Hockey League debut in 1970 with the Toronto Maple Leafs, he also played for the Atlanta Flames and New York Islanders between 1970 and 1977 before retiring from playing in 1978. His off-ice career was equally impressive. McMillan transitioned into coaching during his final playing year, later becoming an assistant coach for the Islanders in 1979. In 1980, he was named the head coach of the Colorado Rockies, also serving as general manager the next season. McMillan stayed with the team as they relocated in 1982 to become the New Jersey Devils. He was dismissed early in the 1983-84 season. McMillan, who was a respected figure in the hockey world, was inducted into the PEI Sports Hall of Fame in 1985. His passing is a significant loss to the ice hockey community and he leaves behind a rich legacy of athletic achievement. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Jerry Grinelli, American-Canadian jazz drummer, known for his iconic contribution to the Vince Coraldi Trio's A Charlie Brown Christmas soundtrack, passed away at the age of 80 on July 20th, 2021, following health complications from a fall. Grinelli's passion for jazz was inherited from his father and uncle, with his percussion skills further honed under the mentorship of Gene Krupa and Joe Morello. Grinelli's drumming career spans decades, including collaborations with esteemed jazz musicians. In 1999, he became a Canadian citizen and from the 1990s until his death, made Halifax his home. He made significant contributions to music education, teaching master classes on jazz composition at Vancouver Community College. In 2010, he released his first solo album, 1313. His project, Tales of a Charlie Brown Christmas, a tribute to the creation of the Cherished TV special, toured jazz festivals and theaters, enchanting audiences with music, storytelling, and local children's choirs. He was an active participant in the jazz community right up to his passing, hosting a workshop for the Halifax Jazz Festival two days before his death. He is survived by his second wife, Nina Siebold, his two sons, J. Anthony Grinelli and Vajra Grinelli, and a daughter, Alexis Grinelli. Grinelli's legacy in jazz continues to resonate through his timeless music and educational contributions. Number one. Philip Jackson, the World Cup winning former professional rugby league footballer and Barrow Club legend, passed away at the age of 90 on July 20th, 2022. Jackson, born in Canada, moved to England at the age of three and started his rugby career in Barrow in Furness, 
Known as the Prince among centers, Jackson was a force on the field, playing as a center or standoff and captaining his teams with a unique blend of skill and leadership. Jackson's decorated career included playing in the 1954 and 1957 Rugby League World Cups, earning 27 Great Britain caps, and touring Australasia twice with the Lions. After an injury forced his retirement in 1959, he moved to Australia, where he resumed his career with the Goulburn Workers' Club in New South Wales, leading the club to a Group 8 Premiership as a player coach. Notable milestones in Jackson's career include three Challenge Cup finals in the 1950s and a successful stint as a player and coach in Australia, where he eventually settled in Wagga Wagga. In 2001, he was inducted into the Barrow Hall of Fame alongside 1950s teammates Willie Horn and Jimmy Luthwaite. Jackson leaves behind a monumental legacy in the world of rugby, forever remembered as a champion on and off the field. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.